Well, look, I think one of the, one of the challenging things about working, previously working as a market economist is that there is a focus in the media and in the analysis on real GDP. Um, and when you're comparing growth rates from high inflation periods to low inflation periods, it makes perfect sense to actually look at real GDP. But the fact is we've had a low inflation environment in Australia for over two decades now. From the perspective of an equity investor, in terms of answering your question directly, uh, most analysts and all portfolio managers will be trying to forecast cash flows for their companies in nominal terms, not in inflation adjusted terms. And from the perspective of households, they earn nominal cash flows, they earn nominal wages, they don't earn inflation adjusted wages. So I think it's more meaningful to actually focus on nominal GDP than, than real GDP. And it's really, it's on that basis that I've been arguing for, for some time now that Australia's been going through an income recession. That is nominal GDP has achieved annual growth, average annual growth of less than 4% for almost four to five years now, um, which is kind of with, is without precedent. You kind of go back to 20, 30 years of history. It hasn't been this low for this long. Now that, in all fairness, that's in large part thanks to the terms of trade shock. Global commodity prices, since they peaked in mid-2011, they've fallen by about 50%. Um, now, it appears as though, thanks to stabilisation of uh, Chinese residential property markets in the last year, that commodity prices have also stabilised. So going forward, if, this is any, if the last six to nine months is any guide, the terms of trade continues to remain stable over the next period, over the near term, then that should at least kind of provide some support to nominal GDP. So we're probably kind of going out basically pulling out of that period of, four to five, of, of sub 4% growth, moving into a period of 4 to 5% growth. And I think that represents probably what the long-term kind of growth rate in nominal terms is achievable for, achievable for the Australian economy. Historically, it's been about 5.5%. So we're just going to have to get used to lower growth than we have, than we've been accustomed to. Um, and obviously that will have implications more, more broadly for equity valuations as well, and also for discount rates that, that analysts and investors use. On balance, yes. Um, obviously, it's going to, it's going to vary from, um, in terms of industries and, and companies more generally. But yes, a lower, lower expected growth rate in nominal GDP should be associated with the lower expected profitability, lower expected ROEs as well.